Hey guys, thanks for joining me with Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance. We're here at PAX Unplugged 2019. This is day three, the end of day three. We're getting pretty tired here, but I'm here with IDW and Spencer to go over Metal Gear Solid, so I cannot wait to dig into this game. Spencer, can you tell me a little bit about what this one is? Sure. So Metal Gear Solid, the board game, is a board game adaptation of the first game, Metal Gear Solid. Awesome. So it follows the events of the Shadow Moses incident, which means Liquid Snake, Revolver Ocelot, Metal Gear Rex, and in the game, we have two types of missions. We have narrative missions that tell the story of the game, uh, that is an adaptation of the video game itself. Okay. And then we have VR missions that are missions that are non-canonical that we created specifically for a challenge for board game players. Those missions tend to be a bit bigger, sprawling. They have they tend to have a lot more going on in them because we are un, unfettered by the story to be able to create larger maps. Uh, the game is fully cooperative one to four players. The uh, campaign has a what we call a ramping player count. Okay. So it starts with one player, and then it goes two, and then it goes four. By the time you get about three to four missions into the game, you're gonna have full four players. Nice. So the first few missions are actually really meant as a way for either you to play by committee, everybody can stand around and decide what one figure on the board is doing, that figure being Snake, because yeah. we do have to follow the story, Snake enters the base alone. Of or you can play those, those scenarios by yourself, learn the game by yourself so that when you're ready to have your your buddies come over and play uh you can play the four player scenarios moving forward and you've already taught yourself the rules and the game is presented in a learn as you play format okay. so the the campaign book kind of says this is how you you your character works and then it talks you through like basically the first few things you'll do on the first scenario and how the guards move and it's a book you actually kind of read as you play uh, and then we also have a second book that's a rules reference book. The story side of the game uh, is 12 missions. I think, I think about six or seven of those is our bosses. Bosses are completely different than the sneaky missions. We'll take a look at the sneaking stuff here today. But bosses are all unique combat encounters that have their own mechanics. And each boss has their own uh, deck of AI cards that oh, control okay. what they do. Nice. In between each scenario, there's going to be some amount of storytelling, whether that is a codec call between uh, Snake and Otakon or uh, or Campbell, he, there's also cutscenes. And those cutscenes are full graphic no novel art done by the guy who's done all the packaging and all the uh, uh, card art and stuff like that. There's 110 pages of that stuff. Wow. Yeah. So it's a massive book. Uh, in total, I think it's going to be like a 160-page scenario book. There's 20 board game tiles. We're only going to see one today. But there's 20 tiles that are all double-sided, so there's a lot of modularity, and that's an important part for us from the game, is you can play everything that we've created, or you can create your own stuff. And actually, the demo we're gonna see today, we've taken a much larger scenario, and we crushed it down into a one board demo that plays much faster, so we can get through it in about 25 to 35 minutes, and shows just enough of like kinda the main mechanics of the game to kinda give you an idea of what makes this game not just like a dungeon crawler, not just a dice combat game, but a game where stealth is important and a game where the AI can trick you because of the, the way the AI deck works. That is awesome. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at a couple turns in action. So let's go ahead and sit down and take a look at this game. All right, so we have Metal Gear Solid here. So Spencer, tell me a little bit about this. Okay, so basically the game is completely cooperative. Okay. These four characters, Snake, Meryl, uh, Gray Fox, the Cyborg Ninja, and Otacon are all working together to complete an objective. Now, the objective is usually set by the scenario you're playing. Okay. This scenario normally is like three map tiles. There's 20 of these map tiles in the game. Nice. And this is all, again, free production materials. Sure. So these are 3D prints. Yep. They're not necessarily final. Um, they're definitely not the final colors. Yep. They've also been to like six shows now, so some of them are a little, a little beat up. <laughs> um, these guys are losing the barrels on their guns left and right. Yeah. Snake's lost the barrel off of his gun, his suppressed gun. Um, but uh, it's good enough for what we're doing today. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and these tiles are a little bit small and the color's off, like yeah. the saturation isn't quite right. They're supposed to pop a bit more. These grids haven't been trimmed yet. So there's a lot of things that are still uh, they're different. This, to remind people, we've been showing this game since about Gen Con. Yeah. And actually, we printed the first round of these things back in, like, June, I want to say. So these are about eight months out of date. Gotcha. We've been making iterations. 
but we haven't reprinted any new stuff because we've been too too busy actually working on the game. Exactly. And this is good enough for what we're showing it shows. Exactly. So um, with that in mind, what we're doing in this scenario, this would normally be a three map tile scenario. We've condensed it down to one, and it's a pretty simple one. Uh, we want to get into this room and collect this blue objective token. Okay. This blue objective token uh, is basically intel. It's a, it's a MacGuffin of some kind. Sure. Usually the scenario will tell you like, oh, you need to pick up the intel. Mm -hmm. You get there, you pick up the intel. And once one of us has the intel, we all have the intel. We've okay. told everybody whatever the information we is we need is. And then any one of us needs to, oh, that should be like that, needs to get to this exit point marker, this okay. checkpoint marker. So um, one of the things we'll need to do as, as a team is discuss what makes the most sense because there's two hurdles in our way. Sure. The first hurdle is the guards. Yep. They're going to be marching around, moving around, making this, acting, they're making their patrols, mm -hmm. and we may go into their line of sight, we may make noise, and that may alert them, and if they get alerted, the game becomes much, much more difficult. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing we need to do is we need to get into these two, the next hurdle is these two locked doors, and we mm -hmm. need to get into them. Now, one locked door, you can kind of see here, has this icon, this 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 one and five on it. Yeah. That means anybody who has an interact option on their character board, which every character does have an interact option, okay. can actually interact with this door and try to jimmy it open, lock, you know, hack it open, lock, mm. pick it open. Uh, this level four door there, you'll notice, does not have dice on it. Okay. And that means that the only way you can get to it is by going to a level four terminal. Okay. They, co they coordinate. Yep. Going to a level four terminal and hacking it. Okay. If you hack a level four terminal, you'll actually access Otacon's uh, hacking deck. Okay. And there's multiple different uh, powers that come out of his hacking deck. This is almost like special abilities. Nice. One of them is definitely going to be uh, Unlocked Door. Yep. Now, if I was giving a demo, the top card is going to be Unlocked Door. <laughs> it's a good possibility. Yeah. That's going to come up. <laughs> uh, so, but there are other things he can do, like use his abilities to move alert tokens around the board okay. so the guards are drawn to different locations, nice. turn off cameras, uh, actually, these guards all have line of sight in the direction that they're pointing, okay. but they also uh, have, um, uh, they will also move in that direction when they activate. Yep. So one thing that is good is that he has an ability to actually rotate a guard. Oh, okay. So he can make a guard look the other way. Thematically, the idea is that he's patching into their radios and telling them to change direction. Gotcha. So on a player's turn, you'll act, act as your character, and you and I will both have two characters we'll kind of toy around with so we can give a quick overview of the gameplay. Sure. What you do is you have four action tokens each, okay. which is these tokens with their face. Okay. Once again, these tokens aren't quite the final size. They'll be a little bit larger, a little bit easier to handle in the final version. Okay. And you pay in to the actions you want to take on your character board. Okay. So the character board has actions you can take, starting at the top here and cycling through. Okay. Uh, if you notice above each action on the top left, there is a cost. Yep. Both of the things are one, but yep. some of them are two. Yep. And this is where character differences come in. Okay. Otacon can't fight. His character board has no combat abilities. Okay. Snake Merrill and Gray Fox can fight. Snake is just a all-around, pretty good at everything type of guy. And and uh, he also has a silent takedown. So okay. he if it goes behind a guard, he can kill them immediately without having to roll dice for combat. Nice. He also has a special ability at the top, which is if he's behind attack, if he's behind a guard and he does a regular melee attack, he will score uh, an extra damage for being successful. Okay. Uh, he also has a, a, an ability for when he is like using a gun and he is by himself on the board. He's got no allies around him. Mm -hmm. Meryl has the ability to, if she goes to a a uh, knocked out guard, she can actually disguise herself and flip over and wear the guard's oh, wow. disguise. That's and cool. that means as long as she is walking, she can't run, she can't fight. As long as she is walking, she stays disguised as a guard. And even if she enters a guard's line of sight, mm -hmm. they, uh, they will not become alerted unless nice. she is adjacent to them. Okay. If she walks right in front of them, you roll two white dice to see if they become alerted. Gotcha. The guard recognizes that, that she doesn't quite look like a guard, right? Mm -hmm. And then Gray Fox, in the demo, Gray Fox is going to play a little bit like Snake, but in the final game, he has um, his sword and stealth camo that he starts with. Okay. And he is a kind of pressure lock glass cannon. Okay. The more damage he takes, the more charges his sword get. The more charges you have, the more abilities you can do with the sword. And he gets to the point where he's like cutting dudes down left and right, <laughs> but he's always running around at like one health. Yeah. So you, he is a, he is a, a kind of like balance between take some damage, do some damage. Yeah. And so he's kind of a fun character that's very fast and very deadly, but he's also kind of fragile. He can be killed because he has to take damage to 
kind of push himself to that limit. Mm. So what we're going to do is I will start as my two characters, I'll Snake, Otagon, and then we'll go to your two characters. Sure. And we'll play a couple rounds just to kind of show how the game works. Sure. And since we're trying to keep things brief, we probably won't play as stealthily yep. or as smoothly as we normally would. Right? All right, sounds good. So Snake has the option to walk. If he walks, he moves one space, or he runs. If he runs, he moves two spaces. It's the same cost, mm -hmm. but every time he runs, he takes a white die and puts it on his card. Okay. So I'm going to count out some spaces real quick. I'm going to go sure. one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I could run three times, or I could run twice and walk once, which is actually what I will do. Okay. And I'll explain why that's important. Because walking doesn't generate... Uh, a dice onto my car. Okay. So I will run twice, one, two, and walk once, one, and that puts Snake right here. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to use my standard hand-to-hand -hand attack. Okay. Now guards have a defensive three, okay. which means they are hit on a three plus, three, okay. four, five, or six. Gotcha. And they have a health of two. So you must do two damage to them to knock them out or kill them. Now okay. Snake is going to roll one die because of this dice icon here. Yep. He's going to roll one die, but if I do any damage at all because of my special uh, sneak attack, I will do two damage. So we'll go. Come on, Snake. Yeah. So I got it. So Snake is going to knock this guy out, and we're going to put this knockout icon down. Okay. Now, this is a perfect example of things that get reiterated on. This certainly has three stars, mm -hmm. and the final game will have two. These patrol decks, when the guards activate, sometimes have special abilities. Mm -hmm. One of those special abilities is to wake these guards up. Okay. When that icon comes up, they'll tick down from two to one, and when it comes off, the guard responds. Oh, wow. When that guard responds, we put him back on the board, and we point him in the direction that we like. Okay. As a way for us to basically uh, kind of help ourselves out, right? Gotcha. Okay. So, I've gone with Snake. I will now go with Otacon. Oh, sorry. Because I put those two card, those two dice on my on my card because I ran twice, mm -hmm. I will roll these, and I rolled two ones. Now in the final game, white dice and there's why here's why we have white and black dice. Okay. White dice will have the iconic red exclamation mark. Yeah. But black dice will not. Okay. Black dice are, uh, mean that any action in with black dice is silent. Okay. But any action in with white dice has the chance of making noise. Gotcha. So because I rolled two ones, I have a I have made a noise. When I ran, I made a noise. Now, technically, I ran back here, mm -hmm. but the way that we treat it in the game to keep it from being fiddly is that we say it's always where your movement ended, which okay. is here. So I will take my blue, what was that noise token, yep. and I will put it underneath snake. Now the guards, instead of following their, uh, instead of following their, um, instead of following their normal path, mm -hmm. they are going to be drawn to this sound. Okay. And that's important because although snakes out in the open, we now know we can kind of control where the guards are going to go. Yep. They're going to take the shortest path to this, which means this guy will go here for sure, and this guy will go here for sure, yep. and they will both turn in this direction. Yep. So now I know that. Nice. I know that Otacon can basically go all the way here. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I won't go the full eight, yep. because if I do, but this guy will know. see me, yep. and guards prioritize red. When you get seen, you go to your full red alert. Oh, yep. And red alert is always prioritized over blue alert. Because they'd rather go after something they've seen rather than something they've heard. Yep. So I'll go seven, and that is four uh, runs. Okay. Actually, it's three runs and a walk. Yep. So I'm gonna roll three dice. And as long as I don't roll ones, uh, I won't draw any additional attention to me. Okay. I drew a one. So what's gonna happen is my sound is gonna end where I move. Now, these guards are gonna change a little bit. They're going to go to the closest, the closest tart market to market to them. So this okay. is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. This guy is going to check out Otacon, Smarker. This guy is going to check out Snake, Smarker. Gotcha. So why don't you uh, go ahead and start with Cyborg Ninja there? All right. Uh, let's see. So we head in that direction. Um... So if I do one. Run here. There's no diagonal movement. I should clarify that. Okay. It's all orthogonal. Yeah. Hmm. 
I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna do full out run there. So three and one walk. So three dice. Three dice. No ones. Very silent. Just like a ninja. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So that'll be it for him as he's used all his actions. So we're over to Merrill. And. Played a little more safe with her. Yeah, she's actually. This should be flipped up. Sorry. Okay. She is not disguised right now. So we'll just do four walks to get her there as we're working our way yeah. down. Now, one thing to keep in mind. This card is gonna check me out. If we flip this over and it is a one, two, three, four, if it is a four movement, mm -hmm. now they're not gonna be alert. If it is a four movement and he turns to look at me, he will see Meryl as well. Okay. So we might have both of them get alerted depending on what happens. Would it have been a better for me to start working down here? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So I have to do at least one run yeah, then. I think it's worth one run. Okay. So you'll do one run, yep. Yeah. So You're good. good. All right. So. We'll uh, flip over the first the patrol card. Okay. Top icon here is a special ability for this card. In this case, if guards get killed, not knocked out, killed, mm -hmm. they don't go off the board. Okay. Their dead body token goes on the board where their where their body is left, mm -hmm. and the guard gets put in this respawn room. Okay. This tells the guards to leave the respawn room. Okay. It activates the guards in the respawn room. So they become active, and then they follow the order of operations, mm -hmm. and they'll move when every other guard moves. Okay. Problem with that is, when there's dead, when there's guards that respawn and their dead bodies are still hanging around, there are more bodies for guards to bump into. And every time a guard bumps into a token of any type, yep. alert, and they all they're all shaped like stop signs. Okay. An alert, a blue question mark, a stun guard, or a dead body. We flip over this patrol deck, and a special event happens depending on the icon that they've seen. Okay. So, we've done that. There's no need to do anything with it. There's no cameras. This tells us the direction the cameras are on the, right. are facing. There's no cameras. And now we're gonna move the guards. They have not seen anybody. All the alert tokens are blue. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna go their blue uh, amount, but they were not gonna worry about direction. Okay. They're just gonna march towards the sound. So this guy's gonna go one, two, three. Doesn't see me. This guy's gonna go one, two, three. Turn to look at the, the noise. And he's gonna see snake. So then we'll take snake up, flip this over to the red alert. Mm -hmm. And before the guards move is finished, he will shoot at you with two black dice. You can see here on his attack, on his stats okay. there, he rolls two black dice. You are also a uh, defensive three. I'm Snake. I'll roll for Snake. <laughs> I'm used to being on the other side of the table. No problem. Oh. So then we will roll for, we will roll for, uh, we'll roll for Snake. Uh, three plus uh, will damage him. Okay. One damage. Take okay. a damage marker, throw it on the board. That guard is done. That guard is done, and this other guard is knocked out. Okay. So that's it. The guards have gone. So now we have to figure out what we're going to do. Okay. So let's start with Snake again. But although this is a, because this is a cooperative game, we do not have to follow okay. player order. We get to, you get to choose we who activates talk. when. Yes. But right now we know for a fact that Snake is actually uh, probably the first guy to go because he already has a line of sight on him. Yep. So we can kind of talk about uh, some clever things we can do. Uh, let's see. How far are you? If you move into this direction, you will drop your line of sight token. Okay. Even if you run up and knock the guy out, you will drop your line of sight token. Yeah. Um, but there is a chance that we could go full aggro, drop our line of sight tokens, and both try to take out guards this round. You would have to run one, one, two, three, four, yep. or you'd actually run one, walk one, and then drop. You have a leaping ability. Okay. And if yep. you do that leaping ability, you move one space. You that move one space automatically, and you roll. Uh, it says two white dice. That's actually a typo from this being an old unit. Uh, it should be two white dice and a black tie. Oh, wow. Nice. So you're pretty powerful when you do that leaping attack, plus you gain a movement space. So yeah. it's worth it's worth looking into for that alone, I think. Why don't we go ahead and let you do that so we yeah. see the, the board state afterwards. All right. So a run, a walk, and then I'll drop my... Last two tokens on the, the oh, leaping here it is. attack. Yeah. Yes, perfect. And then two tokens on that. Yeah. So you said two and one. Uh, yeah. So what's going to happen is this should be red because he's already seen you. He sees, yep. And when you do your leaping strike, you're going to automatically move forward one. Okay. So it will track. It, it will track with, with you because it tracks where he has seen you last. Okay. So it tracks actually where he sees you. So it tracks with you when you move as long gotcha. as you're still in line of sight. Gotcha. There's two fives. Yeah. So you knock him out. Nice. So he goes knocked out. And this is going back to the thing. There are two types of damage in the game. 
Melee stuff is all KO damage. Okay. Guns, swords, uh, and and snakes lethal takedown uh, is uh, snakes lethal takedown. It will it will kill them and okay. that creates dead bodies. So like I said before, that's different icons. So that's good because now what snake's gonna do? The snake is going to uh, activate, and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Three runs. And I'm going to try to do his silent attack. I technically will take three white dice. One thing to point out, my icon has not moved. And the reason it has not moved with me is that the last uh, place there was line of sight on me was where I just was. Okay. The guard got knocked out. There's no, been There's no, no update yeah. of that line of sight. Nice. Think of it thematically as them radioing in where they've seen you last. Yep. Right? Yep. So Snake is now behind this guard. I'm going to roll one white die to do my attack. And because I am behind him, I am doing a sneak attack. If I do this, he will be knocked out. Okay. Nice. Got it. So he's been knocked out. Now, like I said before, this is a easier mission because there, this is really a one player size yeah. map with four players on it. But so we've coordinated, we've gotten rid of all the guards. At the end of our turn, we'll clean up our alert tokens. There's nobody there to be alert. Okay. So now I'll move on to uh, Otacon because I need to get Otacon here. So I'll go one, two, Three, four, five, six. I think that's faster. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So uh, three walks and a run. But the bottom of the card here, it tells you, you only roll those dice if there's active guards okay. in your zone. So nice. there's no active guards, and I clean up my token. So that leaves Meryl. Okay. We know that Meryl and Snake and... and uh, Probably also Ninja. Probably want to get around here so that if I can get this door open, they're ready to go in. Gotcha. All right, so she's. let's just go ahead and go all out. So one, two, three, four runs. Yep. We'll get you here. All right. And again, you, you run for free because there's no alert guard, uh, conscious cards. Yeah, that's cool. That's, everybody's play is gone, so we'll flip over the card. This tells us, uh, this is a, a, a callback to the game uh, where it says... Uh, if there's like, if you ever clear a zone in Metal Gear, yeah, uh, they will randomly have a thing that says Alpha Team check in. Yep. And they, they when they say Alpha Team check in, that's to let the player know we're respawning the area. Yep. So this is the same thing. If there are three dead bodies, because the dead bodies never get back up. If there's yep. three dead bodies in a zone and they have not come out of the monster closet, uh, we will add guards to the board. Yep. So this is good. one of the things that the original game did a lot of. Is punishing players for being lethal. Yep. You know the games have always punished you for being lethal, so we're doing the same thing. Yep. So in this case, this one actually gets discarded. In this case, there's no dead bodies, so we ignore it. There's no camera, so we ignore it. There's no guard, so we ignore it. The reason why this is important, though, is that had there been a star here, we would have ticked off uh, the stars on the stun guards. Gotcha. Luckily, there's not, so we're going to keep moving. Uh, I'll say we start with Otacon because yeah. Otacon's going to decide whether or not these doors get open. Yeah, definitely. This is where we're going to show. Why Otacon, how Otacon is a very, very different character. Okay. So one thing is that Otacon is a hacker. He doesn't fight. The first thing he's going to do when he gets next to a terminal is he's going to hack it. The terminal token itself has the kind of Yahtzee-esque mechanic okay. he needs to make, right? Yep. Four, three, two, one. That's what he needs to get on his dice when he rolls. When he rolls, he rolls four dice. Okay. But when he hacks, he has the ability to hack with two white dice added. It's a nice. choice. The idea being thematically that if he's in a hurry and he wants to hack faster, he can, but he has a chance of blowing security and alerting the guards that he's trying to infiltrate the network, right? Gotcha. So we'll roll his six dice. We got a five, a three. Well, we need that three and we need that one, mm -hmm. right? We don't need any of these sixes or this five, but this is where focus tokens come in. Now in the full game, every character has focus tokens that are kind of tuned to them. Okay. His all manipulate black dice because he hacks with black dice most of the time. Yep. And actually, he can use his focus tokens to actually help out other players when they do things with black dice. Okay. The idea being that he's good at calling you and saying, hey, to get in here, you need to do this. Yep. So what we'll do is I'll actually use this plus or minus two okay. to, take down this, uh, to take down this six. Actually, I'll take down this white six to a four. Okay. Reason why is that if I have to re-roll, I yep. don't want to re-roll the white because yeah. of the alert. Yep. So I will keep that down to a four, and then I need a. Uh, actually, that was a uh, six, right? Yes. And I ticked it down to. Yes. Let me double check what I'm going to do here because actually I can take down this five to a four. Let's do that. 
Take down this five to a four with my plus or minus one. Okay. And I'll keep my plus two. Uh, and that gives me my six. I need a three, four, three. I need a two, right? Uh, okay. Yes. So I will have to re-roll. One of my options is I can do this and I can re-roll uh, this one. I can re-roll any black dice, but I only have one black dice left. So instead, I will flip this to add a black die okay. to my, to my uh, pile here. I got a five. And I can now... Ah, I need a so close, two. Yeah. Ah, I need it to be a four. Okay. So what I will do is... And these only manipulate one die at a time. You can't okay. combo. Okay. So I will um, go ahead and re-roll my two black dice. Just need a four here. You got oh, a two. A two, yeah. which works. <laughs> which is works. It yeah. works perfectly. So I don't have to use my last focus token, which is nice. So these are done. I've hacked the terminal. Now the terminal is engaged at this point in time. Okay. Uh, I don't have to hack it anymore. Even if I don't do the next thing I need to do, I don't have to hack it anymore. Okay, nice. But if I ever walk away from it and come back, it is going to be hacked. We're, okay. This is one of the things we're polishing right now in the game. We're mm -hmm. thinking about that these tokens flipping over when you hack them yep. and flipping back over when you're leaving them. So you don't have to remember across multiple turns if you're hacking for multiple turns. Nice. Wait, did I hack this thing already yet or not? So I've done that. I'm going to now pay into access files. This is him like looking at the file tree, right? Yep. So I'll flip that first card on my deck over. Surprise, surprise, it's unlocked door. <laughs> the exact card I need. Yep. But it is worth looking at some of the other cards we've got. This is a this is disable security. This lets you do things like flip over trap tokens so you can see what they are. Mm -hmm. uh, change some of the card, like remove these icons from the decks, like ignore them. Nice. They also let you do things like, uh, let's do another interesting one, the rotate guards, like I mentioned before, yep. I think. Yep. And you can also move your, your misdirection. You can move alert tokens around the board so the guards are drawn to those. I love it. This yeah. is so cool. So I need to now, now that I've done my hack and I've done my access, I have two chances to hack the door. Okay. So I'm going to roll, uh, I'm going to roll four black dice. I don't get to add my two white. Okay. And I've already used my uh, additional dice on my last roll. So I'll just roll these four. And I need a one, <laughs> a four, and a six. I don't get it. But... As long as I don't, I still keep trying, I can bank. Oh, okay. So nice. I don't have to do it in one shot. I can bank. Nice. Oh, I could have also, I had a, I had a two in there. So I could have spent that two or minus, that plus or minus two to roll that to a four. To a four, yep. yep. So let's do that. Six. So now I just need a six on two dice. And I did not get it. A plus or minus two would have been great. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what are you going to do? Yep. So I didn't get it. Unfortunately, uh, because I didn't get it, I'm going to stop. And we will uh, move on to the next player. Okay. So let's go with uh, move up. Let's do a run. Let's get here. Yep. And then I'll go try uh, to do the door. Perfect. And that's a interact? Yeah, it's an interact. Okay. So it's been one. So it's going to do two black yep. and a white. Yes, sir. And I'm looking for a one, one and a five. five. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. So, so you can interact again. Okay. Same deal with Otacon. Okay. Uh, if you if you were to get a five or a one, you could bank it every roll. Okay. So you just reduce the number of dice. I got a five. Okay, but unfortunately, you did not yep. uh, complete. The other thing, unfortunate thing too, is that because you stopped there, no other player can stop there. Okay, gotcha. But got you it. might as well get um, maybe we'll put Ninja over here. Okay. And then Snake will. Uh, you know what I'm going to do with Snake is I'm going to actually just... I haven't moved him yet, so I'm going to just move him. I'm just going to walk for him and go here. Okay. Uh, that's it for us. All right. Our alert tokens can go because there's no uh, active uh, baddies on the board. All right. We'll flip over this card. We'll discard this one. We'll flip it over. The reason why we have this kind of dual system is this one reminds you what card is currently active okay. because the cam it reminds you what the cameras are doing. Gotcha. Hey, there's our star I talked about a second yep. ago. We flip it over, flip it over, and flip it over. So these guys will wake up after one more round okay. if they get if this star happens again. Gotcha. So it's now back to us. All right. Uh, I will start with Otacon. All right. I will uh, pay in two of these to buy back two of my focus tokens, and they have prices on them. Okay. Yeah. So I I'll buy back two, back. Uh, two. Plus two, plus or minus two, and I will activate my uh, additional die. Okay. 
Then I will uh, hack my two files. So I do that with a focus. I'll down hack, hack my file first time. I'll roll four black dice. We'll go ahead and use that to add a fifth. Yep. I need a one. I need a four and a six. I didn't even need my focus stuff. Nice. Right. Great. So now that we've done that, I can use any ability on this card. Four down to two. I uh, will just go ahead and unlock the four because we have to. So yep. the token just comes off the board to get these okay. doors are now active. And since I still have one ability left to hack, I will hack again. Uh, I don't get my additional die, so I'll just use my four. Uh, I got a four, a five, I got nothing. Okay. So that's it for me. All right, so I'll go with Meryl next. Yeah. And try to do the interacts. Yep. So, two black and whites. I got bank that one. Yep. And do it again. Need a five. One more. Yep. I wish I had my plus or minus one. That would have helped. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and spend one to walk over. Yeah. Sounds space. good. That way, then somebody else can get in there. Yep. Uh, uh, he'll go in. So let's just do a run or walk. Give me next to that. Or should I go over there? Was that one, two? You could run two. And then try one. And, and then, then try move. one and then walk away. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the way to do it. All right. We got to get in there, so. Yeah. Would have been better just to run with her? To yeah, you, give might, as extra well. room? Yeah, you okay. might as well. All right. So then, yeah, he'll do a run. It's two. A walk. And an interact. There's the five. Cool. Ooh. What else you got? A five and yeah, a... Yeah, I just need a one. And you got, you got this, right? Cool. So this is Otacon's okay. special ability. He can manipulate black dice for That's other players. Awesome. So I will do that to give you a minus, a minus two. Okay. Here goes your one. We've unlocked this. Okay. Great. So I will spend one more to run in there. Yes. Yeah, so the second you run in, the first time you run in, the trap goes off. Okay. We flip it over. It's a camera. Okay. Cameras always point out from the wall they're at. Okay. So the red and the blue are always out in the two directions away from where they're at. So that's that. And that's where this and is going to come, come in. It does see you. Okay. So it will drop an alert. Okay. Because the camera has seen you, but there are no guards to react to that. Okay. Uh, and then we will. Uh, well, I can move one more space. Yep. So I'll go here. Yep. And then we'll be ready to pick that up uh, on on the next turn. Cool. Uh, snake has not gone yet, right? Nope. So what Snake will do is, I'll run in here. Okay. Three runs. Don't need to roll because there's no conscious guards. And Meryl says not gone. Oh, she did go, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then everybody's gone. So I'll we'll discard this. We'll flip this over. All the guards are gonna wake up. Oh boy. So I maybe moved a little bit too quick there. Uh, <laughs> I think this is where these guards were. Now one of the things about the guards is we decide the direction they're gonna point. Okay. So either this guy's gonna point this way, this guy's gonna point this way, and this guy is gonna point this way. Yep. Order of operations, they wake up. Uh, we look at the camera, the camera is now looking here. It's not seeing you where you're at. Okay. Uh, Unfortunately, there is an alert token from the camera from before. Yep. So the guards are on alert, and it doesn't really matter whether they're actually pointed in because they're all going to go towards you. Go. Five spaces. So we will turn these guys around. And when this guy turns around, he sees Meryl. <laughs> Surprise. So he stops immediately, and he's going to take a shot at her. Okay. So let's move the guys that are going to move, and then we'll do shots. Sure. We're going to do shots. <laughs> uh, so this guy's going to go one, two, three. He does not see you. Okay. He's going to move in for four. And now that he's stepped on your alert, uh, he's going to, um, he's going, we're going to do the reaction to the alert. Okay. So we take this and give it back to Meryl or, uh, sorry. Yeah. We read what the card says. The owner of this token is in the same zone. Play, uh, which you are, uh, place, uh, place this token under the figure on the blue side. So actually what's happened now is your token, is no longer red, but is now blue. Okay. Which means that this guy, who may not have turned around immediately and seen you, is definitely not going to turn around <laughs> and see you. Um, this guard has already done what he's going to do. This guard is now driven by this alert. Okay. So he is going to go one, two, three, four, stop, and take a look at Meryl. So Meryl has two attacks coming her way. Okay. Each one is uh, two sets of black ties. So we're going to do the first one. Okay. Uh, that guy misses. Next one. 
Uh, that guy hits twice. Oh, so Meryl will take two damage. Okay. And drop it on there. Right. So the guards have gone. So uh, Gray Fox, I would just say Gray Fox just needs to pick this up. Okay. So that's... Uh, it, uh, Interact. Uh, yep. so you don't need to roll any dice. Okay. So you just pick this token up. All right. You've collected it. That can be the end of your turn. Yep. And then we've already matched. We've already actually Snake needs to move one to move onto the zone. And we've gotten one guy into the zone, and we've won. Nice. Normally, we wouldn't have this kind of kind of what I would call like finicky or a little cheaty. Yeah. Like, uh, oh, you can be on one side of the map, and I can be on the other, and we win. Yeah. For the demo, we just do it to speed it up. Of course. Uh, there's a couple of things I'd like to talk about before we uh, call it a call it a game. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say, for example, we didn't see this, but if a guard had been looking this direction and Snake had ran across the um, the aisle here and he'd, broke, he'd gone through line of sight, yep. the way the line of sight works in this game is that it's always straight lines. Okay. So they always see you in a straight line all the way to the end of the zone. They can shoot all the way to the end of the zone. Okay. So as long as they have line of sight on you. And when this stuff like this happens where Snake would move across this line of sight, I'm just going to throw these tiles all over the board here. <laughs> um, when Snake would move line of sight, we would take his alert token the second it's made, mm -hmm. and then it stops following with him the, the, the first space where line of sight is broken. broken. Yep. Not the last piece of line of sight, but where it's broken. Makes because sense. the guard assumes that you kept moving in the direction. Yep. And the reason why that's important is that in some cases, Snake could, if the guard was here, Snake could run through here, cause line of sight, have line of sight, track with him to here, and then he could go back, double back around. Yep. So that the guard marches Set it past up. him. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And so that's a really important part of the game is because we always want the guard to move and turn a lot. Yeah. Uh, movement in the game, guards always, guards won't um, think themselves in the corners. So they notice there's no turn icon here. Yep. When they hit that, they make the only turn that makes sense. Yep. If the guard says they need to turn left when there's a wall, they just do the opposite. Okay. They always turn out from makes sense from where the the thing that would stick would stick yeah. them. So that's the thing that makes the game I think very interesting is that the guards AI and the and the cards turning and stuff like that gives the game a little bit of uh, unpredictability. Yeah. And the stuff like the guards when they wake up. Yep. Which means you can't just math out like well we have at least two rounds before yep. the guard gets to us. Yep. These numbers and these turns can make things. Kind of unpredictable, but your ability to manipulate their AI through hacking or through intentionally being seen and running yep. around corners and losing losing line of sight allow you to manipulate the game board a lot. Awesome! Yep. I loved it. I I mean, I obviously I'm old school. I actually played the yeah, yeah, <laughs> original sure. Metal Gear a long, long time ago, but it feels like you're playing. I mean, yeah. I love the guard interaction and the ability to to be sneaky and move around yeah. and that. I think it's going to be a fabulous game. When is this one hitting retail or being able to, or when can people pick it up? Okay, so right now we're saying summer 2020. Okay. Uh, and that is, it's available pre-order right now. If you go to idwgames.com, okay. there's a big fat pre-order button at the top of the page. All right. If you click that, you'll go to our backer kit. Okay. Uh, one of the, we did have originally have Am uh, Amazon doing a pre-order thing that people may have seen. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, when we delayed the game, Amazon decided they didn't want to hold the pre-orders through gotcha. till summer. So instead, we've decided to open up our backer kit. And actually, there's a benefit to that. Um, when we were working with Amazon, we weren't able to guarantee uh, being able to get through VATS and customs easily. Yeah. Because Amazon was going to be shipping from the USA. Okay. Uh, and those shipping fees were quite high. By using backer kit, we're able to fulfill as if it was a Kickstarter. Okay. So we can ship to our hubs in the EU. We can ship to our hub in Asia and in Australia. Nice. And so we're able to get around VAT customs uh, as successfully as we are when we do a Kickstarter, which is pretty good for most regions and territories. Yeah, definitely. And it's cheaper for most regions and territories yeah. than does shipping from America. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the game is available on Backer here right now. It's a day one edition, comes with exclusive miniature upgrades. So the tank, the helicopter, the the, uh, the cardboard box yeah. are all cardboard tokens in the retail version. They will be plastic miniatures. Oh, wow. The tank and the helicopter are quite big. Awesome. Um, and then there's also a liquid steak miniature and a cool uh, VR mode where he is like, Mr. X from Resident Evil 2 Remake, okay. he just marches around as an indestructible guard. So although he <laughs> operates on the guard deck and not a, yeah. a liquid deck, he's just like this guard you can't stop. That's awesome. So it's pretty cool. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Spencer, yeah. for taking us through that. I will have some links in the description below for you guys that want to go and check out and get on Backer Kit and that yeah. to pick up your copy. 
I will be doing a full teaching video for this as it gets closer. Yep. Look forward to that. And I can't wait. I'm super excited. I am really digging this. So awesome, dude. Thank you so much thank for taking you. this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, for the rest of you guys, we'll see you later. Thank you.